right, video number two. Part of the reason why we do Guild, one of the reasons I like doing Guild, is that it would be very easy for us to just play not very important music. More like 21st century music or, you know, just some of this kind of stuff like Catherine Rollin or, or that kind of thing. But there's, there's worth in studying these pieces. And last week you asked me, like, what's in it for me if I do this? And I thought about that question because to do something this big, you're going to have to be invested in it. And besides the sense of accomplishment, which you would get among some of the things we talked about last week, like time management and that kind of thing. But... I'm hoping that by studying these pieces and understanding the different time periods that you're going to have a better concept of the scope of music. And that's one thing that kids who don't play as long as you, we never really get to that point. But one of my goals is that you would be able to understand some of the characteristics of what you're playing and why, why is it that the Bach fugue is different than the Beethoven sonata? What is it about them that are different? Why is it that it that a Beethoven sonata is different than um, a Debussy impressionistic piece? And so part of what I thought you could be focusing on when you're practicing this week is just to look. I, I don't want to like overwhelm you with with theory type things or whatever. But I think you do need to know this. And one of the things I like you to do, I feel like you have this theory book. I think yours is gray. That's why I'm thinking it's level five, even though I think really technically for where you are in high school, where you aren't playing, we should have really been in a book beyond this. But as you know, it's hard to get around to doing everything all the time, which is one reason why these video lessons are nice, because I can go back to the theory less, the theory book. So at the back of the theory book, unit 17, is just a summary of important concepts and composers from each of the time periods. And it would be a lot easier for you to read it because you can read it quicker and absorb it more than you and I reading it together. But I want you to just think about what's different. Let's think about the fugue that you're playing. You're, the fugue that you're playing is counterpoint. That was one of the most important differences from the Baroque period than all the other periods of music is that you have essentially two melodies that are happening together at the same time and have sci sort of scientifically been knitted together so that they fit, which is what made Bach such a genius because he just he did all these and he did them all on all these different keys. It's just absolutely fascinating. So that counterpoint and that the idea that during that Baroque time period is when we started introducing all those dances. So you're going to find lots of minuets. You're going to find, um, you know, polonaises and courants and these kinds of things. Because remember back then they didn't have television and video games. They didn't have any devices. And so what did they do when they got dark? And they didn't have electricity. So they pushed the furniture out of the way and people would dance. And the person who knew how to play would play while everybody else would dance. It was their form of entertainment. So it was really important that all these short dances, one-pagers, you probably don't remember playing those, but that's that was our entry level into some of these um, standard repertoire pieces. To understand that your sonata has certain form, each part of it has a certain form, and by the time we got to the classical time period, everything was very structured and formulatic which the Romantic period threw all of that out the window. And that's why you have all this oh, warm, touchy-feely, it's all about the feelings and, you know, character pieces and that kind of thing. Which, you know, we as musicians, we like to tap into that. It's not that sewing machine kind of music. But I want you to be able to recognize those things when you're playing. I want you to understand that when we get to the 20th century, we started to do this dissonance. And really, you started to see some of that in the Debussy. And I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I don't think we're doing a Debussy right now. But I think we talked about... Oh, no. Duh. We're doing Claire de Lune. You didn't really have so much of the dissonance in that as some of his other pieces had. But you definitely have the... Not the the very pinpointed sound. We have that cloudy kind of more artistic sound. So I'd like you to think about that. I want you to go and read. It's just two pages in it's 
53 and 54, I believe, in your book. Read those, and then see if while you're practicing this week you can notice some of that. Try to rethink it. Try to, try to see if you can apply it to the pieces that you're playing. All right, and then I'm going to make you one other one. I'm going to talk a little bit about an assignment to do in the theory book.